had a question recently about using a licky mat or another type of food puzzle and whether or not that might become a cue for a caregiver departing. So as we move forward with the separation anxiety protocols, the, one of the first steps is that we want to suspend absences. We want to avoid putting the dog into the situation where they would practice the unwanted behavior, the fear, anxiety, and stress associated with being alone or without having access to their person or people. Um, then we use a desensitization protocol. In most cases, although I'm a positive reinforcement trainer, we're not using food specifically in the protocol. Sometimes because either the dog would um, eat it all and then those symptoms would reemerge because we've just distracted them or because they wouldn't touch it due to the fear, anxiety, and stress of being by themselves. The place when we can sometimes use a licky mat or another type of food puzzle would be as a bridge. And that's when maybe there are multiple people in the household, one person needs to depart, and we need to briefly keep the dog occupied so they're not entirely focused on someone exiting the home. Um, in that type of scenario, you would also want to vary the, the strategies that you're using. So sometimes food puzzle, sometimes different food puzzle, sometimes maybe go on a walk, sometimes playing some training games in a different part of the house. In other words, you wouldn't want the puzzle to become a pre-departure cue. So you would also need to use the puzzle, licky mat, et cetera, at different times when someone also wasn't planning to depart. So that was a great question and thanks for allowing me to talk about how we can use food puzzles in training and their effectiveness with regard to a SEPANX protocol.